Greetings, my dear friends, and welcome to another review. Boy, we've got a nice budget option for you guys today, and it comes from a not so well known company called White Shark. Now, Swiss cheese surely is delicious, but have you ever tried a Swiss mouse? Well, now is your chance. The White Shark Galahad truly does look like cheese, or a noir movie card that the gangsters had to go at with their Tommy guns. Terrible jokes aside, this prodded mouse will set you back 20 to 30 bucks depending on where you're from, and I'm here to give you my two cents in this review. Now, where to start, where to start? Uh, first things first, let's look at the aesthetics. The mouse is, as I previously mentioned, full of holes. But no, dear viewers, these are not your ordinary holes. They are hexagons, honeycomb holes, and we all know that honeycombs mean perfection. But I can't say the same for this mouse. The holes that adorn this mouse make it pretty lightweight, it being around 77 grams, while the entire package comes in at around 101 grams, cable included. Even though it falls into the budget category, the weight distribution on this mouse is not that good, so a good deal of effort is required while adapting to how this thing moves. The SunPlus 6651 sensor that sits inside the mouse isn't highly regarded, but it will fulfill the needs of the casuals among you. It's also worth noting that the Huano switches that were previously only on the Zoe mouse lineup can be found inside this mouse and they offer decent feedback. This means you won't be misclicking and double clicking that much, so the switches at least are a win in my book. Next up are the RGB effects. And all I can say is that they are interesting and you can change them up on the go as well as the DPI. Now, we all know there's always a big butt waiting to mess things up for the users, so here is the major drawback of the mouse. The software that should add more functionality to it actually worsens things, as the mouse's RGB went completely haywire once the installation was finished. This might be a flaw for my model, but it's worth pointing out. A design flaw that truly grinds my gears though is the scroll wheel placement. It's as if it's sinking inside the mouse and it took me quite a while to get used to using it without much effort. This flaw of mine is entirely subjective, but it's a good one to note. I'll even be a little nitpicky here as the cable is a tad too thin and from the feel of it the nit quality isn't that great either. Now, I know this was quite the roast of the mouse, but at the end of the day, this is a $30 peripheral, which is suitable for casual users. Being rough and honest isn't really appealing to tech companies that send us these samples, but that doesn't mean we have to be all nice. If it weren't so affordable, I'd be bad mouthing the mouse and the company all day. Time for a challenge for the community. If this video can get to 1000 likes, I will put this mouse in my basement for a month so we can see how much dust and germs it accumulates through these hexagons. It'll be like an unboxing of sorts. That's that, gang. I hope you enjoyed the review of this Arthurian mouse. Don't forget to slam that subscribe button and tell us what you think. Would you like to see more budget options or the more expensive peripherals? See you in the next one. Peace.